don't know what to do. I'm in too deep with you. Deep with you. And we, we spiral towards the crowd. But we can't slow it down. My name is Michael Pina, and um, I came to LA in July, July of this year, 2014. I used to come here in Santa Monica area a lot when I was in college. Going to Arizona State University, this was the place where we partied. So we'd take a five hour car ride and we'd go to the beach and, and uh, go play. When I was seventh grade, uh, a young man, probably in his 30s, kind of befriended me. I used to go around the neighborhood and I used to collect cans in, in, in all the trash bins and I would collect them so I could buy toys and games for our house. And he befriended me, he owned a laundromat, so I became his um, friend and I basically would go out and I would clean his laundromat because he taught me how to drive too on the freeway. So we were going down the road and I would sit on his lap and we'd drive all the way here and uh, we would come to, to Magic Mountain, Disneyland, and he took me all the rides. I'd never been there. He would take me a lot of places. He would take me all over the country, actually, um, because he, he used to own these big, uh, it was called Wasco mat, wa laundromats, and he would build them. So he taught me how to build laundromats and do all this fun stuff. And he would take me to the conventions, and I would be his, his son. <laughs> so he brought me here to California the first time when I was 13. Yeah, it was a very instrumental part of my life. Your pink hair looks ridiculous. Uh, I know, I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> go to my office. Where do you work? I work in uh, downtown Santa Monica, and so I have a, uh, how do you say it, a software company, in yeah. which we develop software for some studios in town. Yeah. And um, working on some other projects. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's what I do. In my spare time. Yeah. <laughs> That little, little duck. Hey, doggy! I actually love the color. Maybe that was it. I may have told them not to show up. So these guys do gaming translations. 
sure that's what they're all doing. All of them say check boxes. What does that mean? So when they get a video game, you have to turn it to um, like the Chinese, the Chinese, Korean. Oh. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I should go to Facebook. <laughs> should we do my Facebook? <laughs> so you do it. So I do all day. No, this is what I do. Well, then I competed in, and, and, and became a gymnast, um, and then um, started doing gymnastics when I was a sophomore, going to be a junior. Of course, uh, I was really kind of odd against it because people just didn't like gymnasts. They, you know, the only role models we had, the gymnasts there at the time, were pretty effeminate, and um, I just didn't like it. You know, I just, but I did it because I loved the sport, and I just just loved the idea of the sport. And uh, so I had these two different role models, and I just wanted to live up to them. So I did, I loved it. So I started doing gymnastics when I was a sophomore, going to be a junior. I worked at the local grocery store so I could pay for it. My mom kind of taught me very young to be kind of like one of those gumption kind of people. My brothers were really adamant about me not doing it um, because they said it was pretty gay and I shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. Gymnastics is something that I've loved and I've always loved. Is when, you know, when everybody was against me doing it, you know, because I left home really early. I left home when I was 15, very soon after I started, because my mom didn't want me to do gymnastics either. She was pretty much like, no, you can't do gymnastics. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's a rich kid sport. And I'm like, well, no, fuck you, I'm going to do it. That's what I did. My mother was diagnosed with cancer two years ago, and she's a very instrumental person in my life. And when she was diagnosed, it, it really scared me, because of all the hard times I had in my life, she was the one who drove the hardest. She's the one that stayed focused. She's the one that made sure that, you know, I was taken care of. No one else, you know, everybody else is against me, so to say, and she is the one. So here she now, she's fighting cancer, and I'm looking at her and she's being the same mother that I know, you know, but now she's going into herself, so now she has to look at herself. And that's pretty, like, emotional. So I, I really wanted to do something. Besides even involving all the people, I wanted to present her a story and say, Mom, thank you. go to the park and do a little bit of parkour. Before we do that, I want to make sure you don't kill yourself. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your experience with parkour. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I've done parkour for quite some time. I started when I was 16 and kind of took off from there. I decided I was going to learn how to do free running. Free running is basically... But this particular story is about a young man who, I started coaching him when I was uh, in high school. I was probably a junior in high school, and I used to coach him in a little gymnastics class. He was a little five or six year old, and uh, he's pretty amazing as a little guy. For some reason, I kind of like befriended him, and we became really good friends, and when I moved on to college, um, he would still come, and I would still coach him a little bit because we were at the same club. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm not that bad at this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of controversy because obviously he was such a talented athlete, his parents necessarily didn't want me to coach him because obviously I was too young and they wanted somebody with better reputation and better status. He wanted me to coach him because I was really good with him and we had a good rapport, but also technically he just knew I was something different, and I was. Well, there's altruism, altruistic value in sport, and there's the true extrinsic value of sport. I believe in both. Like, you can't just be so motivated to win that you forget what it is to lose. 
Okay, but then you miss the whole experience because when you do lose, you're chattered. At the same time, you can't be so focused on the sport that you can't value winning. So you have to have both. It doesn't mean you have to win. It doesn't mean, that, it doesn't mean anything. It just means you gotta go for it. That doesn't give you energy. Yeah, it does. It does. Like, I'm going to teach you something about life, okay? A little sprinkle, a little donut, a little cupcake, it goes a long way, my friend. So we're His family, they wouldn't let me coach him for a while. And then years after year, um, you know, I would just kind of instruct him here and there. And finally, he went to college. And in college, I pretty much said I was going to quit coaching. Uh, I decided I wanted to move on with my life. Uh, I didn't feel like I was getting the gratification and satisfaction as a coach that I wanted, uh, especially being because I was gay, it was just such a hard problem. So he asked me to come back and coach him in college. Um, there was a big struggle between all the coaches. They didn't want him to do a triple back, um, but I've been teaching him a triple back since he was a little kid, since he was 12 or 13. So he totally believed in me and I totally believed in him. And we had this huge meet and all I can remember was that a lot of pressure was on for him not to do the triple back, um, but I pretty much pushed for it to happen. He looks at me and I looked at him and I just like, without having to tell each other, I just said, just do it, dude, just do it. He went up there, it was all call was on him, and he did it. And when he did it, the whole gym went to a roar, I went to a roar. And more importantly, his, his parents looked at me from a distance. And it you know, felt kind of good. Rico Suave That's and cool. this Sunday we're doing this and then next next Sunday I'm doing a um, like a calendar. Alright. <laughs> like a calendar. Not in the machine, but like during this week, um Tuesday or Wednesday and Thursday I'm shooting for Paul Mitchell, you know, because they wanted like a, a boxer and stuff. So I'm out here to become the next Rocky. It's just like doing things, going for it. It doesn't matter. And and so you know, after all these years, you know, of so many things happening in my life. It's just an expression of, why not? Just do it. What the heck, what do you have to lose? You know? and, and if you win, then great. If you fail, you won because you tried it. And that's what matters. It's just, I, I don't want to be on the 10 year plan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of people, I've been out here for 10 years. You gotta be hungry, like yeah, for me. Hungry. It's not that I'm not hungry, I'm just not used to like kissing ass, you know? I know people, but I don't want to be like, kept like, like, what's up, put me in the movie, put me in the movie, go on, go on. Because, you know, some people, <laughs> sometimes they want you to put in work, you know? I was a straight up street fighter, and uh, oh. whooped a lot of ass on the streets, there. and uh, almost got killed, stabbed oh. seven times, you know, and uh, realized that if I wanted to live a little bit longer, and uh, take my street fighting skills to the next level, Jump in the ring. Okay, let's We're in this world together. Yeah. So it's like when Ali used to fight. He's in, out, in, out. Yeah? Yeah! Yeah! Come on, baby, keep that one. You know, once you get good, then you can throw your hands down here. Well, exactly. Don't That's why when, right, we get, when we're you know? filming and we're talking to these different athletes, I don't know them. I don't have to know them, but I know their love, and I sense their love. And that's why I get so excited about the sport that they're doing, and I want to do it. And it's really fun to watch the film crew, you know, start playing with it too. And I feel like I walk away thinking, see, I won. It's not only did the athlete have so much fun, but so was everybody else that we had with us. And to me, that's kind of, you know, that's what's special, you know, and that's what coaching's about, that's what motivation's about, that's what life's about, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, these girls, sorry. Sorry, okay. girls. There are too many girls, you know? Girls are good. When you're pretty and you're a professional boxer, you know, they feel protected happens? when they go out with you, you know? Even if Dennis Rodman comes up, you know, I'm like, how you doing? He's like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a professional boxer. He's like, okay. He scared him away. Uh, no, I don't think he was really scared. 
He was pretty uh, under the influence. I was scared, baby. He's trying to steal my girl. So. Oh, okay. It's just, you know, a lot of people talk about different things. Like in yoga, they, they, med they, they meditate and they talk about being one with nature or being one with themselves. Um, like when we did boxing, you know, that was such a, an amazing feeling. When I said that, I meant it. It's like when I was punching or I was getting punched, I, I never boxed before, but actually it was pretty like fun. You know, it was pretty aggressive, pretty manly, you know, but at the same time, just fun. You know, and I think that's, to me, that's what sport's about, and that's why I love sport. One, two. Ha, ha. Good, good. Ha, ha. Now we're gonna do four, straight. All right? Come on, let's get to work out Come on. Okay. Hey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Man, you punch hard. Yeah. Um, now we're gonna do 10. All right? You don't do that, you're gonna puke. Let's go. Let's go. 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good job, good job. Halfway there. All right? Halfway there? Yeah, let's go. Now we're going to eight. Come on. We got we to gotta say, don't bust your load, all right? Don't bust don't your load. Don't bust my load? Right away, all right? You know, it's, it's called pace yourself. Don't bust your load after you do that. If I'm not knocked out, I'm coming right at oh, you. Oh, shit. And you can't do nothing. You know, wow, 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 wow. Yeah? You know? Do it again. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Four. One, two, three, four. Good. Two. No. Is that two? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Good. All right. How's that feel? Do you feel like you got the one, two down? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's, yeah. Your, that's your power punch. Oh. Yeah. All right. Let's do it again. So here. One, two. Whoa. Oh, oh, okay. Mm. The uppercut is one I don't want this one, I want this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uppercut is one of the most deadliest punches in the sport of boxing. Why? Because it's the punch unseen, all right? So if you're looking at me up here, and I throw someone in these up here, and you don't see it, you uh, get knocked the hell out. You know? It's actually kind of fun. It really is. You know what I'm saying? And you know, if you do a little bit more, what? You know, wah, it's power, twist, you're coming from underneath. Wah, ha, whoa, mmm, wah, damn, you want to lift the chin up. Mm. Good. Wah, damn, you're a natural. Yeah. yeah. That's sting in his hands. Mmm, wah, wah, wah. Breathe. Bitch. You're holding your breath. You're going to pass out. Oh, yeah. You're going to have a heart attack. No, don't say you know? that shit. I'm just, all right, I'm not a, you know, but it's, it's it's real. It happens. I used to do that a lot in street fights. Really? Come up to them and just what? I did it. And if they try to fight this. back, then I kick their ass. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew this. You heard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you heard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's something like. Okay. Ow. You know? Again, yeah, again. All right. Sorry, I flash back too. Hey. You know? <laughs> hey, like your number two. Look at two, the new number one. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, all right. Come Just kill him. Punch through him. Pound sign, I Punch through him. Through him. Hey, <laughs> Go right through him. So you want him falling forward? So you knock him out. Hey, That's hey how you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said with no Serbian accent, no Serbian Rocky. Hey, what are you going to say? No. Beach, beach. <laughs> beach.
You gotta eat your own dog food. First, it was kind of like a funny phrase, but all I kept thinking about when I was going through all the different crises in my life was that I have to eat my own dog food. I can't just talk about positive motivation. I have to believe in it. I have to act it. I have to be the person now standing on my own, motivating myself to get to the other side because there's no one else. All that. <laughs> so, if you were to do that and your legs were bent, your quadriceps would be constantly firing. So right. we want your legs to be actually be locked out, so locked. the weight's okay. on your skeleton, okay. not on the muscles. Good with that? Yeah. Stay put and don't move. Stay in that position. If you're only going to use one bell, this can rest, and you can cheat and put it way over here. Is that allowed? Yes, okay. but women can't do that because they have a breast. Well, so most of, them, yeah, most of them can't really... <laughs> that's called deep hand insertion. Okay? Deep hand insertion? It is. Deep hand insertion. Hmm. Okay? okay. Now, from it over your head, and lock it out. Are you serious? Yeah, go straight up. Okay, just lock it out and relax. How would I get to the jerk part? I like the clean part. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Try a couple of those. Stand up fast and let the ball rotate. Oh my God. A little heavier, right? Oh it yeah. It requires you to stand up and pull a little quicker. Why did I ever open my big mouth? See, I have, I have plants already. Nice. Oh, well, that's okay. why I got these, so that way slide. Oh. Once you get up in a higher weight, like a 35 pound bell, I can't muscle that up. But if you use your hips and you push through, then I can make the bell fly. You're pushing them all the way to your hips. You're like thrusting it forward. That is correct. Thrusting, thrusting. Your glutes, too. <laughs> well, you know, that's not a technique I'm used to. Uh... <laughs> it's just, just a little pelvic thrust. <laughs> With a little pelvic thrust amongst friends. And the lip, like, how old are you? I don't know, in your 20s and 30s? Sure, I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> I'll be 41 in two weeks. Oh my god. I didn't look like that when I was 41. <laughs> So which part do you like, the, the clean, the jerk, or the clean and jerk? Uh, the first couple times I competed, I did biathlon, which is one set of jerks and one set of snatches. Oh, snatch. What's, yeah. what's a snatch? The snatch is when you start down here, go all the way to the top. <laughs> That's right. That's how smooth snatch, my snatch is. <laughs> do you say? Team <laughs> Sorry. There's a reason we call ourselves Team Inappropriate. Yeah. I'm the wrong person to be talking to then. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, thirty-one. Six, five. In that process, it was kind of like euphoric because I found myself laughing more. I found myself like feeling a little bit better about myself. Although I was still depressed about my surroundings, I felt sure about who I was and it was pretty powerful.
And what makes you like love it? I mean, what's the part of it? I, uh, I took it as a, kind of like as a joke, you know? Uh -huh. It was on Groupon. I jumped in. Literally one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> like, I thought I was going to be like super strong. I'm like, yeah, I could do this. And then I was like, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even climb on the pole without slipping off. And all of these other girls out there were just showing me off. They were making me look like an idiot. And after the end of class, I felt like I didn't, I was just, you know, terrible. So you guys didn't teach me to sexy, that. right? right? If that's what you want to learn. Yeah, I want to be sexy. <laughs> well, I am sexy, but I want to make you yeah. sexier on the pole. Half squeeze the knees. Stand. Oh. Readjust. Knees up. Squeeze. Stand. <laughs> I'm not spinning. <laughs> yes, yep, think That's of hitting your knees together. Squeeze your knees, squeeze your knees. Good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Cross both knees. So you just want to think of sitting like a lady and put one leg over the other. Okay. Okay? Yep, there you go. And you're going to tilt off to the side. Tilt okay. off to the side. Hey, do you want yeah. me to let go of my hand? Don't let go. We're not going to let go right now. You want to try to stay leaning into the pole, especially if you're going to let go. Good. Very nice. Very, very, nice. very good. <laughs> How does that feel? Sounds like it's too bad now. I'm here. We won't get the same feeling, yes. With this, you're really going to arch, squeeze your booty, and push your hips up towards the ceiling. Yes. Oh, I, yes. Oh, I can do that. Yes. Tilt that way, I recommend. Yeah, good. Good. Perfect. <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah. You can open that and reach back. And yeah. Put the hands up. There you go. Holding. Oh. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I don't care. It's my story to my mom. Just say like when we first start talking about the show, and I did all these little talk shows, and I really wanted just to find a positive way to reach out to people. It, hey, you know what? Life sucks, but you know what? It's great too. So let's just find a way and find a happy medium to be happy. And and just look at you know, instead of being half cup full scenario, um, let's let's just see what we can do with life and go forward. Con el alma herida por un mal cariño que sin condiciones le entregué mi amor. Llevo ya dos días en esta cantina, dos días encerrado. And that's the actual gym. We're going like this. When do you see that in the United States? They just sit there and panhandle. How many panhandlers have we seen? Panhandlers here? <laughs> oh, yeah. How many panhandlers do you see here? I haven't seen one yet. They fucking painted a donkey, a zebra. <laughs> and now they have a business. It's a different culture. Hustling culture. 
Still there, and my kids are still there. Like, I get it, I get it. But. Where's the boy? <laughs> the boy's in the car. <laughs> oh, wrong video. You have to, you have to model them for us. <laughs> so, how are you? Uh... Great, great. So, are you, did you, what, did you know, did you figure out what time we were gonna be here? From your text message? Were you afraid when they were outside? <laughs> <laughs> they looked like the mafia picking you up. <laughs> and you go to school at night? Dos y media y ocho? Uh, but no, not to going. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, I paid your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Is she gonna come to eat? She can come eat. If she wants to. Mm -hmm. And your And your brother? And your dad, they can come when we have uh, CNN. And... Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Latina, uno, dos, tres, si, no? si. Strong. Diga, tell them. Se puede. No tengo teléfonos, no? I will not. Because, uh, probably my mother and father is working. Oh, okay. And my little brother uh, is school. School? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good as well. He's gonna be our soldier, our boy soldier. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> Did you get my message, what Delphine said about you? Yes. She said uh, you're very cute. <laughs> She's like, he's very uh, cute. He's very cute. <laughs> She's cute, huh? But uh, Delphine, uh, I believe, not lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> Why? She looked at you good? I, I, I don't know. I know your, your friend, the uh, Delphine. Uh-huh. But... I believe pieces. <laughs> so this is not even crowded. Later on, it's gonna be like way, way. So, Mexicans don't wake up till so eleven. You know right? Rodrigo? Well, I met him at a park. He was walking his dog. And uh, remember, we were you tupero. His name is tupero. Nina. 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 Sí. He was walking Nina, and she, Nina came to me, and we started talking, and then we started talking. Okay. You you get to be a famoso actor de Mexico, see? <laughs> Yes. Todas las chicas. Rodrigo, Rodrigo. <laughs> My family's in New Mexico, and they actually uh, were in New Mexico before New Mexico was a state. Look at that. That's great. Look at all the stuff. The... So we're actually been here a very long time, actually, longer than most of them. The other one is this. Ah, okay. Okay. And um, which one could be this one? A variation. A variation. <laughs> <laughs> but what about this one? There is another what one. About this one? Another one. There is another one. It's very hard. This one. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Let me show you the chicken. El, 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 el move del gallo de, de oro. El gallo de oro. Okay. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
I have to be the person now standing on my own, motivating myself to get to the other side because there's no one else. And in that process, it was kind of like euphoric. Because I found myself laughing more. I found myself like feeling a little bit better about myself. Although I was still depressed about my surroundings, I felt sure about who I was. And it was pretty powerful. And there has to be tools to do it. And to me, where and when was that tool? It was like, what, what better to get some old guy? Okay, I'm not even a middle-aged guy. I'm some old guy to go out there and do crazy sports. I remember one time in corporate America, somebody says to me, Mike, you know, your laugh is contagious. And I said to them at the same time, as a split second without even thinking, I said, it's either that or cry. And I, I walked out of the elevator and she was stunned. Everybody in the elevator was stunned and I was stunned. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? But then I realized, like my whole life, you know, I had been having all these different issues, um, and, and, but I had to be positive about it. And so I always carried this positive attitude, kind of unrealistic attitude. But you know what? Here I am now, 53 years old. I don't really care, okay? It doesn't matter. You know, it's, I just want to have fun. And if I can express that to people, and if I can find ways to do that, then by gosh, I'm going to do it. You can't really take out a culture of a family, of your ethnicity. America had actually taken over Mexico City. I never knew this. I never knew it was fought back by a, children who fought back and refused to give up the city. One even died by jumping off the city with his flag. It's not about nationalism at this point. It's about pride. It's about people. It's about wanting what you want and going for it. And taking a chance of, of failing, you know, because they failed, yes but they succeeded as well because they caused a whole movement. So what a powerful you know, example of life. You know? That's why I wanted to go back and I, I wanted to tell a story. And I, when I was, you know, my mother was diagnosed with cancer two years ago and she's a very instrumental person in my life. And when she was diagnosed, it, it really scared me. Besides even involving all the people I wanted to present her a story and say, Mom, thank you. Because she really did, like, I was going through my hardest times. She was the person who believed me. And no one else did. She, she gave me the money to survive. She gave me the pride. When they were trying to knock me down, she's the one who taught me that, no, it's not going to happen. Honestly, without her, maybe I wouldn't have been that person. Maybe I wouldn't be here today because I would have lost. But she's the one who gave me that spirit. So now I'm seeing her fight with cancer and she's laughing on the phone and talking. She's not telling me the truth. I think she's not. But she's in her comfort. So I can't, I can't deny it. I can't be angry with her. I can be frustrated and tell her to tell me more, but what she tells me, she tells me. So, like, I fought Lucha Libre and I sent them her a little statue with Lucha Libre. And she's like, what is this? And she's making a joke about it. And I was like, Mom, just watch it. Just watch it. Because she hasn't seen any of the shows yet. She hasn't seen none of them. So I want to, at the end, say, Mom, here, thank you. Thank you for, for fighting for me and for making this something that I can do. to show other people because you know, I'm proud. I mean, not everybody has mothers like that. I get it. I get it. Not everybody has family like that. I get it. So I'm lucky, and I just want to be able to share that and just hope that she can get to the other side. And really, that's what kind of, as of late, has been my motivation and my passion. And, you know, the, filming this, you know, I was very lucky. A lot of things fell into place so I could have the money so I could take us all and make the shows. And, you know, I didn't tell her. You know, she still doesn't know, and I just want, I can't wait to the day when she sees it. I want to toast uh, again because uh, this moment is not possible if the Gallo de Oro. <laughs> Adios. Thanks to Gallo de Oro, we are all here. Thanks to life. Yeah. Well, See, this is the blood of, of, of Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is very good for your heart, for your feelings. For your feelings. <laughs> Dumb your feelings. You forget, you forget all. <laughs>
because of the riots and you can come here. Yeah, makes it more exciting. Makes it cooler. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you're I a sick fuck. No, I, you're I a sick lived fuck. in Portland too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The land of hippies lived there way too long. You know, there's this fear factor of obviously, but isn't that kind of excitement? What? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, of course. I, I'm just saying. What's, what's happening, Mike? Well, there's a riot. There's a riot here. Not a riot. There's a protest about the students. Um, they're trying to let their voice be heard, obviously. <laughs> so we get to. Uh, it's okay. We'll be okay. It. We'll be okay. I'm okay with the back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yes. We'll walk. It's one of that. Are we how far away? We're gonna go to this villa, Tulica, where our hotel is, and we're gonna walk to the hotel. Yes. Uh, the the policeman. Uh, I, I tell you something uh, very special. Uh, the policeman says that there are more or less um, 15,000 uh, students and manifestants, political, and the, the National Palace was, was, was uh, burned. <gasps> yes, even. Uh, it's very aggressive because of the death of, of 43 students uh, by the mafia, the, the drugs mafia and the government. Wow. It's very hot this moment now wow. in Mexico. Well, then, let's go. Then, uh, <laughs> We have to go with the, to this. Yeah. Okay. Let's go through. Yeah, yeah, just, no. this, uh, let's go. Because the cars, they can't go through? Exactly. Yeah. And we, we go so what are you again. guys going to do? We go again. They're, They're going to work. We're going to turn around. Yeah, we're going to turn around. We're going to walk. 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 We're
Oh, the Garden Palace. Yes, the fire. Garden Palace it's is on fire. fire. The, the door is fire. And were there people in there? Uh, well, uh, 50, uh, 15,000. Uh, Inside the building? No, no uh, outside. Uh, okay, yeah. Yes, this is the okay. yeah, situation. Yeah, it's it's the okay, then. So, uh, news, the more fresh news. 17 okay, minutes uh, ago. 17 minutes ago. 17 minutes ago. Yes. Uh, well, uh, so what we're going to do is going to go put our bags away and go investigate, right? Yeah, I'm going to be a little nap first. <laughs> no, 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 not during the revolution. <laughs> no, we left after the revolution. So, there's a lot of cops here. A lot of protection. It's kind of crazy. This is, this is where the elite are, you know, social elite are. That's what's crazy. There's a revolution going on and the social elite are eating dinner. No, I remember it. I remember it. So he's gonna tell us what we're, we're trying to do. The last scene in the movie. They did a cut. It's about 35 to 40 minutes. So 35 minutes. Yeah. So he's gonna introduce the music movie. We're still not gonna tell Nana that it's me on the screen. We're just gonna leave it go. We thought about it a lot. We had different ideas. So we're just gonna let it go. So when he's, we'll have mom sit down, and then you know she'll be a little surprised seeing everybody here. But it doesn't matter. You know, you say hi. We're having it. We're gonna have fun. Okay, you're just pulling up. Okay. Oh, that's a good stall. <laughs> she stalled. <laughs> she said I'm pulling up now, but she's only three minutes away. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, good. Okay, bye-bye. Oh yeah, hey, tell her that they might be filming you coming in, so, okay? So just, okay, thanks, okay, bye-bye. So she's gonna tell her that we're gonna film her coming in, so not to freak out. How you feeling? A little nervous. Uh, not seeing it is kind of making me nervous. <laughs> I don't know what my family's gonna think of me being crazy. Uh, I don't know. When she went to the hospital for cancer and all that stuff, they're the ones that were there with her. And my nieces and nephews now, my nephews are now living with her, so they're in a two bedroom house. Uh, so it's really crowded. <laughs> so we're gonna go to it and eat lunch, you're gonna see. And uh, so my sister lives with her too, so it's pretty small. But extended family. What is she gonna think of your hair? Well, I think she's just gonna be, she's gonna say something immediately. When she walks hair. up, she's gonna look at my hair. What did you do to your hair? She's gonna say something. And then of course, my niece is gonna say something too. And then I'm just gonna rush them through and say, hey, we have to hurry, we have to hurry because they're starting to start the film. They wanna start the film. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Mom. Yeah, bro. <laughs> You're waiting. <laughs> I know. Uh, no? You just made me do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
encore, encore. <laughs> no encores. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. Well. Thank you. Theo, <laughs> yeah, what did you think? He's good. He's good. Good job, Erica. Mom, all of us made it because that ride is helping me. Like that helped me. And everybody here, like, uh, we can tell everybody to keep quiet and not tell anybody. <laughs> and everybody's just quiet. I wouldn't tell anybody. Being a gymnast and then skinny, thin. Oh, great. There we go. That's real time. Did I say you fat? <laughs> That's my mom. And then, too, like that, you know, I could just. Like was looking like, like when he was thin and you know he didn't <laughs> 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 They actually made me stay at a Union Gospel Mission because they had bed bugs. Homeless bitch. <laughs> My whole life has been chapters of just craziness. And this is another chapter. And, and to me, this is an important chapter because now I can just look at my mom when she sees this and just be happy that I can say this to her. And my brothers and sisters, they're all, all in on it. They, they know what I'm doing, they haven't told her. So we all know, and so I'm gonna feel very good when it happens because I just wanna look over and just see her. And I can picture her face and... <laughs> so yeah, this, this is the amazing part. Just being part of it. You know, where wins about doing it, right? I keep saying this, but I'm doing it. And that's what I'm gonna do. Ya me debe mucho, 
apágueme, Señor. El mariachi dice, ya estamos cansados. Y Dios se los contestó, háganme un favor. Va a variar un poco. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone, if possible, Jew, Gentile, white men and non-white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there is room for everyone. And the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of the light can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed through communication. We have shut ourselves in. Technology that gives us abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical. Our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and we feel too little. Or the technology. We have lost you now. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. Super jumbo jets and texting has made the world flat. The very nature of these advancements cries out the goodness in men, cries out of universal brotherhood. My voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, many victims of systems that teach men torture, loyalty through suicide, and prosecute innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. This misery is now upon us. It's but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who are in want to control human progress. The hate of men will pass and the dictators die, and the power they take from the people. And so men, let us not die. Liberty will live and perish. People, don't give yourself to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cattle. Don't give yourself to these unnatural minds and question hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate. The unloved and unnatural people don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke's, is written, the kingdom of God is with you. Not one man nor a group of men, but in all men. And you, you the people, have the power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You the people have the power to make life free and beautiful, to make the life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a chance to work that will give you youth future, old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. No, no, let us fight to free the world to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world within science and progress will lead it to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, that's all you have.